Welcome back to another week of what Barry's talking about. From Barry 360, I'm Dan Blakely. You've heard of sex, drugs, and rock and roll? Here's a twist. Sex, Drugs, and Pots and Pans, a cookbook with a rock and roll influence. Cope Service Dogs recently lost Buddy, one of its greatest ambassadors, and as a result, one of its greatest fundraising events. But Buddy's legacy lives on in a new event. We'll tell you more about it. And local first responders will be getting an added boost from the opening of a second firehouse subs location in Barrie. But first, real estate, the market in a correction period, home values falling after hitting record levels in the early part of the year, interest rates nudging higher, prices affected, sales affected. We've heard about drastic swings in some places, but what about Barry? We went to the source, Barry 360's Ian McLennan getting the lay of the land from Luke Woolsey, president of the Barry and District Association of Realtors. Interest rates have gone up. The market appears to be volatile. Every market is, is different, but specifically proper to Barry. How much year over year change have we seen in terms of, you know, number of houses sold, what they're selling for, and, you know, what makes this market maybe different from others? Yeah, we've definitely seen a decrease in the number of inventory changing hands uh, over this last year. Um, for August specifically, our most recent stat release, we saw 165 units sell in, in Barrie. And that uh, represents a decrease of about 19% year over year in terms of just the amount of inventory. To be honest, we're not sitting at a low amount of sales. What we are is we had a very high amount of sales last year. So that's that number is actually not concerning. Um, what we have seen, though, for the first time in all the years that I can remember is an actual price decrease. So we saw a very, obviously, high market activity over the last few years that peaked in February of this year. And we did see that. February peak gradually declining over the last few months. But for the first time now in August, we're seeing a price slightly lower than we were this time last year. So August 2022 versus August 2021, we're actually below uh, in Barry by 5%. Now, Bank of Canada has indicated um, the expectation will be we're going to continue to see interest rates rising to get a grip on inflation. How much of an impact or, you know, what sort of um, crystal ball gazing is your association doing and looking ahead going what the impact might be here locally? Yeah, I mean, I think we've seen the brunt of the impact already. When interest rates started to go up, that did give some people some sticker shock and they had to reevaluate, obviously, their purchasing decisions. So we saw that cooling. I think we've seen prices come down now to where I think is the low or very close to the low in terms of that. Prices will continue to uh, be affected uh, to some degree by the interest rates, but I think people have kind of baked that into their plans at this point. So uh, this is, in my opinion, is is pretty much going to be the bottom of the pricing barrel. People who might be thinking of selling, wondering if now's the time to... uh you know, move upward or, or, you know, downsize or make their per- first purchase. Um, what advice would the association give to, to people right now who are on the, uh, on that level where they're, they're not sure if they should uh, bite or not? I mean, as you said, we don't have a crystal ball, so it's impossible for us to know going in exactly what prices are going to do, whether that be up or down over the next few months. What we can say though, is in 90% of cases when people are buying and selling, they're doing both, right? So if things have come down a little bit on your sale price, they've also come down a little bit on your purchase price and vice versa when you go, you know, up and down. So, you know, if you are selling something to retire or cash out or leave the country, that's when things are a bit more tricky as you got to try and time that a little bit. But when you're making a move from one home to another, generally that all bounces out. The right time to buy or sell is when the right time is for you. And the market right now, um, in terms of uh, kids are back in school, um, does it pick up now at this time of year during the fall? Yeah, we generally see a little bit of a lull through the summer as people are doing their vacation plans and things like that. Um, as we get into the fall, as soon as the back to school rush is over, we see, tend to see that pick up. Uh, as people try to get a little bit of a step out to get into something new by Christmas. We heard from some people that when the market was hot, uh, people were getting you know good money for their homes, and they still are t- technically, that people that were renting within those homes suddenly had to find another place to go because you know they wanted to cash in. Um, we've heard now that that's changed a bit, where people just aren't sure they want to take that step, and that may be good for renters. Do you, do you hear that, or how, how you play that out? <sighs> I'm actually hearing the opposite in, okay. terms of, in terms of rentals. Uh, what it comes down to is the rentals are going to be much more affected by these interest rate hikes than anything else because the investors are highly leveraged. The investors are generally at 80% loan to value on everything that they're purchasing to rent out. So when those rates go up, their purchasing power goes down and their cost to carry these rental properties is increased and they're raising rents to to try and, and accommodate for these new costs. Uh, it also tends to dwindle the supply of available rentals because there's less people jumping in to purchase investment properties when rates are high. Um, but in terms of people, you know, selling their homes um, that were privately owned, um, you know, just out, out of one off in order to recoup that cash, you know, that happens as people reinvest their, their portfolios, if you will. But um, I wouldn't think we saw a great increase or decrease in that based on the rates. Um, you know, when prices are very high, obviously, people do want to sell assets. But for the most part, a, a large amount of the 
rental stock is held by larger scale investors, and they're not really swayed by that. Uh, people that are living in the GTA want to buy their first home, um, whether it's you know brand new or one you know that's already been lived in, so to speak. We read that you know they have to go further north and further north, and and Barry is obviously a popular destination from a cost standpoint. It was still reasonable compared to, you know, the greater Toronto area? Yeah, everything's relative, right? So right. Uh, as the prices uh, increase in Toronto, that pushes people into, say, you know, Richmond Hill and Newmarket and Bradford. And as they increase there, it pushes people to Barrie and into Aurelia and so on and so forth. Um, we're seeing an average price point in Toronto, which is still hovering right around the million dollar mark, whereas uh, we were touching that uh, earlier this year here as well. And that was kind of pushing people further north. But now we've settled to you know around the seven hundred and ten thousand dollar mark as being an average price in Barrie. So it's still almost a three hundred thousand dollar difference versus the GTA, which can be the deciding factor for affordability for a lot of people, for sure. And anything else you'd like to add? Uh, you know, as we've said, that the right time to buy or sell is when the right time is for you. You can't be too bogged down by market conditions. Uh, there may be some tweaks to the plan, depending on what things are doing out there. But if it's a time for you to get a larger home for your family or a downsize, generally we can balance your purchase with your sale to in order to get you in the right situation. And you're not going to be too affected by whether the market is up or down if we're going to just put the cards on the table for you. Barry and District Association of Realtors President Luke Woolsey in conversation with Barry 360's Ian McLennan. A second location of Firehouse Subs is opened in Barry, this one in the South End at Park Place. Great news for fans of the food they offer. Better news, perhaps, for first responders. Co-owner Neelam Shaw telling me, We do believe in community, and community is so important. And what our firehouse and us as a franchisee believe is in life-saving equipment. It is so important that we can make a difference in the community. Simcoe is very important to us. Uh, last three, four years, we have donated a lot of uh, equipment to police, uh, paramedics, and we have also worked with uh, uh, Elizabeth Fry Society, Salvation Army. There is also a place called Open Fridge. We are, we are ready to support any community g- group that needs help. And we do believe that we want to make a difference in uh, Simcoe. Having one more location, that means more money, more funding for us to provide it to our first responders. How did you come to get involved with Firehouse Subs in the first place? Uh, we, like I used to be with the Little Caesars. I had a couple of franchise uh, restaurants. But uh, my nephew wanted to get involved with something. And when we were looking into it, uh, we realized it, how much they get involved with community. Something we both strongly believe in it. And we love the food, the quality of food. Obviously, the, we slice our meat and cheese every morning. Uh, hot steam uh, cooked uh, meat and toasted bread. And you try it once, you're hooked for life. I noticed something when I've been up uh, to the, the shop in the, in the north end. You had buckets there. And there's yes. something special about those buckets that yes. you sell. Well, pickle love, uh, people love our p- pickles. Uh, we give pickles with the sub. And when we empty those... We want to, instead of discarding, we are selling for $3. All $3 go to Public Safety Foundation. All that money comes back in community, and community member gets to use it for token of a price compared to what they would pay in a, a big box store. So we do believe, and we also ask for a roundup. So if your bill is, say, 19.50, we say, hey, would you mind rounding up to $20? And that $0.50 cent goes to Public Safety Foundation. Back to first responders for a moment. You, you've uh, given a lot of donations over the years. Do you have a new target for this year, or are you waiting to, to have people come and say, help us, help us? And what we do, we reach out to Barry Police Fire Department. We reach out to paramedics and say, what can we help you with? What kind of equipment you need? And then we go through process of applications and everything. And the last one we did it was Barry Police drone, $45,000 uh, drone. And they loved it because they had an older one. And I uh, was just talking to our MP and said they just used it recently to help somebody locate. And, you know, we have a lot of older population. Sometimes they get lost. All those things come in handy. Major accident. You know, 400 is known for having accidents. So some of those things do make a difference. And saving 5 seconds or 10 seconds makes a huge difference to first responder getting there quicker, you know. Thanks for coming to Barry. Thanks for uh, coming to the South End. We'll look forward to seeing you some more. Thank you. We appreciate all the support we get and love we get from Barry community. Neelam Shaw is co-owner of both Firehouse Subs locations in Barry. What Barry's talking about is a weekly podcast featuring the best Barry has to offer and more. You can make it easy to connect by subscribing to what Barry's talking about. 
through podcast distributors such as Spotify and Apple. Still to come on what Barry's talking about, how you can buddy up to help cope service dogs and a classic rock lover's guide to fantasty cooking. Now this. This is your cool concert listing. Hey, this is Amy with this week's Cool Concert Listings. Post Malone and the 12 Carat Tour comes to the Scotiabank Arena September 20th. The weekend brings his rescheduled After Hours Till Dawn Tour to the Rogers Center September 22nd. Brian Adams comes to the Scotiabank Arena October 5th. October 12th, the Scotiabank Arena also welcomes Michael Buble and his Higher Tour 2022. Moniskin arrives to history in Toronto November 21st and 22nd. Finally, Sarah McLaughlin will be at Casino Rama November 26th. And make sure you are listening this upcoming week because it could be your chance to win tickets to a recently announced show. We'll have more on that. Good luck. For ticket information and more details, go to 1075coolfm.com. Stay up to date at 1075coolfm.com. This is what Barry's talking about from Barry360. I'm Dan Blakely. Since 2000, Cope Service Dogs has been providing highly skilled service dog partners to people with disabilities and enhancing the lives of youth experiencing challenges by involving them in the training process of the dogs, but it can't be done without funding from the community. Here again is Barry 360's Ian McLennan speaking with Cope founder Jane Boak about a new fundraising initiative. Our fundraiser this year is called Buddy Up for Cope, and it's a bit new, but not completely new, because um, it started really back in 2018 when Buddy, who is a long-time Canines in the Classroom dog, was retiring from his career. He was trained by different students and helped them gain confidence. When he retired, he and I paddled around Lake Simcoe um, for eight days, and that event was called Buddy Paddle Simcoe. Buddy unfortunately passed away at the age of 16 and a half years in January, and we're taking an opportunity to honor him and all of the dogs who are kind of career canines in the classroom dogs with our Buddy Up for Cope event. And um, how long does the event go for? And this is and how much are you looking to raise, I guess, for both canines in the classroom and uh, reading buddy program? We'd love to raise $30,000 to help um, our canines in the classroom and reading buddy programs. And what are these programs, briefly? Um, you know, what, what's the involvement uh, with the canine and, and, and from there? The unique aspect of our um, service dog training program is that the first year of training takes place at high schools. So the puppies and dogs are transported to high schools and students learn how to train them to become service dogs. And in the process, they get lots of great leadership skills, communication skills, and a lot of improved mental health. So that happens in high schools and canines in the classroom. But part of that program is also taking the dogs that they've trained and uh, we do field trips to elementary schools to help children read. So it's all facilitated by the high school trainer. They sit on a pillow with the dog and the, the child reads to the dog. And we have like amazing experience with both the kids and the student leader because they can relate to the, the kids that who are, might be struggling to read. And these young children look up to our student trainers um, because they do an ama- amazing job leading the dogs and facilitating the reading buddy. And for people that wish to uh, contribute in terms of participation and help this fundraising cause, uh, where can they access information? People that want to participate or donate can visit our website at copedogs.org. And the idea is that we have a gallery of dogs. You can choose your favorite dog, and we're encouraging people to set an activity goal with the dog that they buddied up with, and they would send the buddy up link for their chosen dog to their family and friends to collect pledges to help them with their buddy up activity. It's a a new event that encourages lots of activity and we know that sometimes doing things need some motivation and we know that dogs help motivate us to do lots of things and they're fantastic buddies for, for doing anything so hence the name buddy up for cope 
That's Jane Boak, founder of Cope Service Dogs, speaking with our Ian McLennan about the Buddy Up fundraising campaign. You can learn more at cope.org. Right then, let's see what's on the menu. Perhaps some roasted red hot chili pepper soup for starters, followed by Paradise by the Oven Light meatloaf, capped with some moody bluesberry muffins. Some of the many classic rock inspired recipes you'll find in Wayne Sumbler's Sex, Drugs, and Pots and Pans Cookbook. Craig Cat and Brian, the Rock 95 morning crew, were looking for some new culinary delights and gave him a call. We've got Wayne Sumbler on the line, and he is the author of Sex, Drugs, and Pots and Pants. <laughs> It's a cookbook. It in is a case cookbook. You were wondering. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, what, what came first, the love of rock and roll, or the love of cooking? Uh, I love rock and roll. Yeah, yeah, I believe that. Now, what about when it comes to the recipes? Did they come first, or did you cook the food and then come with the name after? Uh, no, some I already had food sort of uh, that I was thinking about, uh, but um, it, it was actually I started looking under from A to Z uh, bands that had food in the name. Or uh, maybe there was a food in the title, for example. Right, so you were looking up the, the music first and then being like, what can work with that? Right, because you have, they're all puns. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the hook the for names. the book, right? So right. like we have stuff like Carry On Wayward Buns. Roasted we, Born to be Wild Turkey. Yeah, uh, Paradise <laughs> by the Oven Light Meatloaf. Deep Purple go. Stuffed Eggplant. <laughs> yeah, uh, These cl- are great. Closer to the Tarts. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know Dohemian yeah. Rhapsody Cheese and Garlic Balls. <laughs> are you a dad, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have two grandchildren and I have a daughter. <laughs> yeah, so so let's let's get this out of the way. Your your favorite let's do your favorite name first because there's got to be one you're so proud of that you're like i got this um it would be closer to the tarts closer to the tarts <laughs> is great that struck me too i thought that's fantastic and then your favorite dish because some of this stuff looks really really good and it looks fairly simple too what's uh what's the one people should try uh, i would say deep purple stuffed eggplant really that's my probably my favorite in there i mean there's a lot of them in there but uh that would be probably my favorite yeah Although my wife, she won't eat it because she doesn't like eggplant. <laughs> oh. Well, that's a tough one for you to cook, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so this is a book. Where is it on sale? Where can we get this? Uh, you can get it on Amazon worldwide. It's also available at Indigo Chapters. So, and you've also, the cool thing is you've got YouTube links. Yep. Is this link for the video of the mu- like the music video, or is it for you making this actual food? And the one actually with uh, my grandson and when we were in Italy uh, three years ago. So, um, and I was uh, teaching him how to make uh, white wedding soup out of Billy Idol. <laughs> white wedding soup. <laughs> so you play the song that you're punning in the YouTube video while you cook the meal? No, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. There's a copyright oh, that's infringement right. there. And do you do you cook this uh, food for your family? Yes, I do. Um, and in fact, my wife and my dog were my first guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> and do you present it like that? Are you coming out of the kitchen going, "Hey, carry on, my wayward buns are here." <laughs> I do. I do play music when I cook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of eye rolls and waves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. They'd love it every time. Now you're retired, so this is a passion for you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm an author now, so and I got you know a couple other books on on, on the go right now too. So it's uh, yeah. You're working on a children's book, right? Uh, yep. Uh, awesome. The sidecar dog saves Christmas, which is sort of strange when you go from sex, drugs, and pots and pans to a children's book, but <laughs> <laughs> the way it works. But what, whatever works. Yeah. My dog will be actually in my second cookbook. It's uh, because I actually raise funds for. Orange Bowl SPCA, so um, uh, all these women want to get pictures in the sidecar with them. So, oh, cool. Aww. Hey, will, it, will it have a rock and roll theme? Yeah, yeah. It's got sex, drugs, and pots and paws for ladies only. Oh, ladies only. Look at you with the long titles. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we're very excited to uh, present the book, and uh, much success to you. Once again, you can get it at Indigo Chapters and where else? And Amazon. Sex, drugs, and pots and pans. Wayne, thanks for taking the time to tell us about it. Wayne Sumbler doing his best to sell the Rock 95 morning crew on his Sex, Drugs, and Pots and Pans cookbook. And that's it for another week. Thanks to Ian, the Rock 95 morning crew, and Cool FM's Amy Oust for their contributions, and to Matt Ladder for piecing it all together. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to What Barry's Talking About, rate it, review it. You can also keep up with What Barry's Talking About on Facebook and Twitter at Barry360 and on our website, Barry360.com. I'm Dan Blakely. We're back again next week with more of What Barry's Talking About.